this YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. So now that we have a sense for what light is, there's some combination, some interesting combination of, of waves and particles. I think the best way to describe the different types of light that we discussed in class was to talk about it as a wave. So let's think about light as a wave. And light comes in lots of different flavors, if you will. There's an entire range, an electromagnetic spectrum of light. Light is some sort of electromagnetic disturbance, so it's often referred to as an EM spectrum of light. And what do we know about all types of light? What do they all have in common? They all travel at a velocity equal to c, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Seven laps around the Earth in one second. But how are different types of light different? Before we get there, we might talk a little bit about what I mean by different types of light. They're all different types of light. You and I think of light as what I would call visible light. All the colors of the rainbow. Roy G. Biff. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. All the colors of the rainbow. But in the last century, century and a half, scientists have recognized that there's more to the story than just visible light. And astronomers would be remiss if they only used one part of the spectrum to study the sky. There are all sorts of details that you can flesh out from different types of light. Beyond the visible, beyond the red, is a type of light known as infrared. Beyond that, microwaves. And beyond that, further still, radio waves. If we go to the other side of the visible part of the spectrum, we get to violet, and then we can go beyond that into the ultraviolet, ultraviolet, then we can go to the x-rays, and then gamma rays. This is a continuous spectrum of light. You say, well, why did we break it up the way we did? Because of the instruments that were present at the time and our ability to detect, our eyes detect this, biology gives us this. Instruments were developed to detect different parts of the spectrum. It is a continuous spectrum. What makes these different types of light different? Visible light travels at the same speed as microwaves, but what's the difference? That's where our wave description comes in handy. Think about light as a wave. One way to describe a wave is to talk about something called the wavelength. The wavelength is literally the distance between the crests of the wave. We use the Greek letter lambda to describe that, the wavelength. So wavelength is the distance between the crests of the wave. Something with a long wavelength also has a very low frequency. It's another way to describe a wave, to talk about its frequency. Frequency, as the name implies, is literally how frequently the wave passes through. How many waves per second? So if you've got a big, long wave, long wavelength, you've got a low frequency. So let's talk about this. The radio end of the spectrum Think about radio waves. Think about radio antennas, like the ones they used to have on cars. Radio antennas are big. They're there to catch long, big waves. So radio waves are very long wavelength waves. As we move in this direction, cell phones use a form of radio and microwaves to communicate. Back in the old days, cell phones used to have small little antennas. Microwaves are smaller than radio waves, as are infrared, and then in our eyes we have little antennas. Little antennas that detect different colors, they're cones, those cones sympathetically vibrate, okay, with different wavelengths of light, and so red light is shorter than infrared, but longer than blue light, and then on out to ultraviolet, where the wavelengths get shorter still. And by the time we get down to gamma rays and x-rays, we have extremely short wavelength light. So wavelengths increase in this direction. Our eyes are sensitive to a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. In fact, it's a tiny portion. Wavelengths can run from hundreds of meters on the radio end to gamma rays, we're talking about trillionths of a meter. 
the visible part of the spectrum sits right there. And we've exaggerated it because that's where we perceive most of our information. So wavelength increases in this direction, and as we discussed earlier, as wavelength decreases, the frequency increases. So I would argue that the frequency increases in this direction. So if wavelength is increasing in that direction, frequency increases as we move towards the gamma rays and x-rays. Wavelength and frequency are two ways we can tell the difference between different types of light. The last way is the way you might have thought of when we first started talking about this. You look at this and go, gosh, this part of the spectrum is kind of dangerous. I don't want to be exposed to gamma rays. That can be dangerous. And x-rays, man, they have enough energy they can see right through your skin, into your bones. Now, a small exposure to x-rays is not that big a deal. It's, there's a therapeutic value to be able to go to the hospital and see what's going on in there by shining a small bit of x-rays on your bone or your teeth when you go to the dentist. We know ultraviolet is not quite as energetic as x-rays, but we know it can give us a sunburn. And as we continue to move in this direction, we go to lower and lower energies. You might say, well, wait a minute, what about a microwave oven? A microwave oven is an intense amount of microwaves. So that's where the energy comes from. It's not so much that individual microwaves are energetic, it's that it's an intense a value of them. Quite honestly, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near a radio tower while it was transmitting. Even though individual radio waves are no big deal energy-wise, an intense number of radio waves could potentially be dangerous, hence the fences around those towers. Why is it then that the energetic side of the spectrum is here? It's the same with frequency, right? Frequency increases in this direction, so does energy. Does that make any sense? It should. Think about it. All these little waves coming in. Short wavelength means higher frequency. Imagine going to the beach and getting hit by wave after wave after wave after wave. That deposits a lot more energy. So this is the energetic side of the spectrum. When you get to this side of the spectrum, again, the waves are long wavelength. There's not as many of them. And boom, you have lower energy. So. Frequency and energy increasing in this direction, wavelength increasing in this direction. All the different types of the electromagnetic spectrum useful for studying different things in astronomy. You want to study high energy explosions, collisions of black holes? Use x-rays. You want to study low energy collisions of molecular clouds forming young stars? Use radio. You want to study stars? Use visible light. You want to study planets, which are a little less bright, a little less energetic, maybe you use infrared light. And just like the Hubble telescope works in the visible part of the spectrum, NASA has telescopes like the Chandra telescope and X-ray, the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, the Very Large Array in New Mexico for radio observatories. There are all different types of telescopes that work to gather all these different types of light. And that brings us to our next discussion point how do telescopes work?